Yo! Video games. What up dudes, it's Matt here from Yo Video Games. Well, it came and it went, and now we all have all the info we could ever want for the Nintendo Switch. Mostly. So, seeing as how I did a prediction video, let's dive right in and see how I did. As for the release date, I, yeah, I was a bit off. But I was still within the same month, though that's not really fair since they've always said it was March. It's March 3rd, not the 24th. Damn, that's pretty awesome actually. In fact, that was probably one of the best things to come out of the conference. Started off strong, but you know, got a little shady after that. First off is the price, a meaty $300. Now I know that plenty of Nintendo fans will gladly accept this price and say it's a great value and offers so much for it, but let's be real here. It's 300 bucks, it has 32 gigabytes of internal memory, uses micro SD for extra memory on that, can fit up to 250 gigabyte SD micro uh, cards, micro SD cards as it were. But looking ahead at the competition, you could go on Amazon, this took me two seconds, I could get a PS4 vanilla original model for 258 basic. Or I could go $270 to get a PS4 with Uncharted 4, an exclusive title that's highly regarded and praised. Although, yeah, I'll be fair, even I'm kind of not that up on the Uncharted series. It's fun, but it's not revolutionary. All of this, of course, comes with 500 gigabytes of internal memory. So what on fucking earth is making the Switch so goddamn expensive? I predicted it was going to be $250 basic and $300 for a bundle, something with, say, you know, Splatoon 2. But guess what? It's $300 for just the fucking console. Well, as it turns out, they spent a lot of time describing its biggest features. HD rumble and IR aiming. What it basically boils down to is Nintendo, in all of their infinite glory and wisdom, has decided it's still fucking 2006 and we needed to bring back the wiggle waggle wiggle waggle. Because God knows the Wii U just wasn't a good enough idea. We need to go with back to what was successful, what worked. Motion controls. Yes, that's gonna bring it back. So what did they use to demonstrate these motion controls? A game where you don't actually even look at the screen, called 1-2 Switch, and ARMS! Basically an HD upgraded version of Wii Boxing, and maybe Punch-Out as well. But I'll let me get to those in a second. Why do I say this causes the console price to go up so high? Well, if you look at the price of the accessories for the Switch, for the Pro Controller, Granted, this is not the Joy-Con controls. The Pro Controller is 70 fucking dollars. 70 dollars, that's right. For the Pro Controller, it costs more than your standard full-priced game. If you want a second set of left and right Joy-Con controllers, that is $80, 50 a piece normally, or 80 together for left and right. Now, if you want to have the sliding battery grip for them that comes with the console, in other words, having a full second controller, that's another $30 on top of that. So for a second full controller for the Nintendo Switch, it costs $110. It is almost as if Nintendo was run by Activision when deciding how to price their controllers and peripherals for this system. Holy fuck. Now let's get back to 1-2 Switch. This is a game where you basically stand and point at each other and do motions. Now the crazy thing about it is, we're talking about a controller that has haptic feedback rumble and an IR sensor in front of it, a little kind of like a motion camera basically. More or less the same technology in the fucking sink at an airport. And what does it do? Well, you pose and copy, all you, or you eat a pretend sandwich by mouthing up and down in front of the IR sensor on the little remote. Holy fuck, this isn't even a game. This is like less than just fucking dance. And you know what they're charging for this? Because it's not packed into the system. No, 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 no. Why would it be packed into the system? That would make sense. No, it is a separate title that costs a goddamn 50 whopping American dollars. And as for ARMS, which I'll admit has a little bit of coolness factor to it, but it's still at the end of the day, is a wiggle waggle, thrust your hands, punch your hands out, $60. Sixty fucking dollars. That is quite the expense for a title that's more or less an upgrade to Wii Boxing. That's not even coming out at launch, by the way. 
So let's talk about that launch lineup. What do we know for sure is coming out on March 3rd? We know 1-2 Switch is. We know Just Dance 2017 is. Legend of Zelda is coming out on March 3rd, thankfully, but we'll get back to that. We've got a port of Skylanders Imaginators because, yes, that's what everyone was waiting for. People didn't buy Imaginators, I guess, in the fall. They were waiting for the Switch version. Okay. And we have Super Bomberman R by Fuck Konami. Now, this is interesting because it's a 3D remake of a Super Nintendo Bomberman title, which is pretty cool. I'll admit that. But it seems that it's going to be a full price title. Also, within the spring, we have ARMS. Again, not launch title, but our $60 uh, Wii Boxing title is sometime in spring. We have a indie title coming out within March called Has Been Heroes. We have a port of I Am Setsuna sometime in March by Square Enix. We have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at the very end of April, I believe April 28th or so. Uh, that's cool. We all expected that. Uh, the weird thing is that it seems that there isn't new courses. I may be totally wrong about this, um, but it definitely has battle mode. It definitely has new characters. It has the fucking squid kids uh, in it, of course. And yeah, I'm happy to see battle mode back, but as pointed out, this is a $60 game. So what amounts to basically getting some new characters and battle mode, which should be DLC for the Wii U version, is instead a $60 full upgrade for the Switch. Sometime in spring we also get Puyo Puyo Tetris, a title that looks really cool, but has also been available for the PS4 for years in Japan. And sometime in March, we apparently get a $20 indie, not indie title, you can't call it indie because it's published by Nintendo, but a small download title called Snipper Clips, Cut It Out Together. So that's basically sort of in the vein of Pushmo or Box Boy, a interesting looking two-player puzzle game by Nintendo. Oh man. So. Yes, the launch is a unmitigated fucking disaster. Yes, Zelda is going to be cool, but we'll get back to that. We'll get back to Zelda. And we have 1-2 Switch, a game that Nintendo wants to tout as a party title where you're going to lug around your Wii U and you're basically going to pretend to play video games. You're going to pretend to draw. You're going to pretend to sword fight. You're going to pretend to play ping pong. Because remember, on the Wii, if you played table tennis or you played tennis on Wii Sports, you actually had to swing at the right time. Here it's all going off of sound and basically haptic feedback because you're not looking at the screen. You're literally looking at a person in front of you as you just wiggle waggle, wiggle waggle in rhythm to the sound of a tennis ball or a ping pong ball hitting a paddle. Wow, holy shit. $50 everybody, 50 fucking dollars. Again, like Zelda being the only big title and everything else, except maybe Bomberman because it's, it's technically a remake, but these are all, for the most part, ports or, or upgrades. I mean, ARMS, yeah, and it, like, so Nintendo's the only one obviously offering exclusive titles with once you switch ARMS and, and uh, snipper clips, but we have a very, very small amount of third party games and they are all old ports, sometimes years old. Uh, but things just keep on coming. Let's talk about online. Well, online is going pay to play with Nintendo. That's right. They're going to offer a paid ser subscription service. Uh, now, again, the, the, the Nintendo the service is, is not going to be pay to play until the fall. Right now, uh, it'll be free. Free till then. Now, online lobbies and voice chat will not come out until the fall when it goes to a subscription service. Now here's the crazy thing, this is something people probably missed. Voice chat on the Nintendo Switch requires using a smartphone app and to download that app you need to have a paid subscription going. Nintendo does not want you actively using any sort of microphone attachment with the system. You have to use your smartphone and connect with your friends on an app that can only be downloaded provided you have a paying subscription. Wow. Oh, and let's talk about, you know, games, freebie games, because, you know, Xbox Live games with gold and PSN Plus, they offer free games, so Nintendo's going to do the same. They're going to offer one Nintendo or Super Nintendo game a month with added online play to the title, which I don't think a lot of people realize they actually did that on the Wii Virtual Console. The original Street Fighter 2 games on the Wii Virtual Console had online gameplay. Uh, very, very fucking um, unknown bit of trivia there. But anyways, here's the great part. After that month of playing that Nintendo or Super Nintendo game for free, you have to buy it. 
it goes away. You do no, not own that game as long as your subscription keeps going. That game is only free for that specific month, and if you want to play it after that, you have to buy it. Wow, Nintendo, just one step forward, two steps back with online once again. <laughs> but let's not all make this all doom and gloom. Let's talk about the good shit. Let's talk about summer and beyond. Uh, you have uh, Splatoon coming in this uh, summer. Splatoon 2, actually. A full-on sequel. Uh, I'll admit I'm not too well versed in Splatoon from the first game on the Wii U, so I can't tell you how much is new. I definitely saw new things in Splatoon 2, but I don't know how much of a giant leap forward this is. But it is a numbered sequel, so that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey is their big uh, fall title. Uh, I thought it might have been a late summer, early fall, but I guess it's going to be their big holiday title. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, it, it looked really neat, but it also looked really odd. A lot of people making Sonic Adventure comparisons. I'm kind of down with it in a weird sort of way because it's not just, hey, here's Mario in the real in the real world, whereas like it was Sonic Adventure with Sonic in the real world and that's it. No, no, it's like Mario in abstract worlds, it's Mario in jungle worlds, it's Mario in like realistic settings. So I'm kind of down with it. I, and, and I trust Koizumi, I trust his team at, at EAD Tokyo. I'm all kinds of down with it. The big, big title for me is obviously Xenoblade 2, and I'm going to talk more about Xenoblade 2 in another video probably, but Xenoblade 2 is coming. It's a numbered sequel to Xenoblade. It's oddly enough supposed to come out this year. Yes, the director's wife and in the press release all state 2017. I don't fucking believe it. It's going to get delayed. Whatever. Um, so I'm super fucking jazzed for it, but I'll get into that in another video. We have Fire Emblem Warriors because that's what everyone wanted. It's going to make a lot of people happy. I have no desire to ever, ever touch the title, but I know it's something that people want. It's a good title to announce. It's a good title to get people excited. Uh, another uh, one was, of course, they talked about Dragon Quest X coming to the Switch, Dragon Quest XI coming to the Switch, and then they're going to put the PS4 Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2 on the Switch as well. Those are kind of Musou games, kind of Dragon Quest Warriors, I guess like, you can't really call it that, but that'd be real confusing, but yeah, so that is kind of neat, but again, it's another one of those, hey, it's more ports. Uh, a big title, I think, for a lot of uh, JRPG fans was that there, there's a new Shin Megami Tensei coming to the Switch. It's very early, they said, it's not going to be anytime soon, obviously not this year, but again, that's that's great that it's happening, because that's it's something that a lot of people are going to want. Square Enix had a really bizarre game called Project Octopath, which is from the Bravely Default crew. And it's weird because it's kind of like sort of this blend of modern-ish lighting with old school graphics. And to me, this is really what I would have preferred out of a World of Final Fantasy title instead of that fucking awful, oh fuck, awful Kingdom Hearts light bullshit we got. But it looks cool. Don't think it's coming out this year, but yeah, whatever. Pretty neat. As for games that had absolutely no media but were announced anyways, No More Heroes 3 is coming. They said they're not sure about the title. Um, then again, who knows because it had the world's most distraught translator trying to translate Suda 5-1 and it, he just was not having it. Uh, but hey, No More Heroes 3 is coming. That's awesome. Ultra Street Fighter 2. Obviously, Max is going to talk a lot about this. If you want to know in-depth coverage on it, go to him. It's a port of Street Fighter 2 HD Remix adds Violent Ken and Evil Ryu, and it adds Dramatic Battle Mode, only they're calling it Buddy Battle! Buddy Battle! So much more soft and inviting and friendly and social and everything a good Nintendo title ought to be. Oh, come on, Buddy Battle? Fuck you guys. Uh, I'm not excited at all for this. I, I think the graphics in Street Fighter 2 HD Remix look awful. Um, I mean, there's definitely art that's gone into it and definitely time's gone into it but i don't ugh. <laughs> just would rather play with the original sprites the weird thing about this title is they're not announcing pricing or release yet but in japan it is 40 dollars. it is a 40 dollar game in japan and this seems fucking outrageous and crazy a nine-year-old game that when it came out nine years ago on xbox and ps3 was 15 dollars now it's 40 because we added two fucking characters an evil version of ryu and ken come the fuck on i hope capcom's smarter than that in america and doesn't release this for anything more than 15 it really should be 10 as for western support this is where it gets real dismal guys so fucking uh 
<laughs> fucking shady ass Todd Howard comes out and says, hey, Skyrim's coming to the Switch and it's you'll be able to take Skyrim on the go. And the surprising, <laughs> funny, hilarious thing about it, this isn't Skyrim Special Edition. This is original 2011 Skyrim on Switch. And it's not coming out at launch. It's not coming out in spring. It's not coming out in summer. It's coming out in the fall. It's <laughs> a year after the special editions launch, we'll get the six-year-old version of Skyrim on the Switch. Woo-hoo. Oh, and as for that one EA game they had in development, oh, here we go. It's FIFA. Now, obviously, this is uh, kind of a big deal because FIFA is huge in Europe and, and probably a parts, many parts of Asia as well. But here's the, here's the real kick in the nads. Apparently, this FIFA on the Switch is just a port of the most current PS3 and 360 version of FIFA. Ho ho! Alright! Unprecedented support! Legacy support! Oh, yay! The best! So, let's talk about how they wrap the show up. Not with Beyond Good and Evil 2, not with some other big title, though. Frankly, for me, Xenoblade 2 was that big fucking jaw drop moment, but... They decided they were going to end the conference on Zelda, the game they've shown the most of. It was even on Jimmy fucking Fallon. They showed a really kick-ass Zelda trailer. Uh, I won't get too much into it other than the, I think it was really well done. I, I really like the voice acting. I think it's really cool to see a very uh, um, a lot of production value put into a Zelda title. I like seeing that. I don't like fucking weird, creepy anime bathing Zelda in the woods. It's so fucking bizarre to me because it's like, huh, Zelda has like this kind of cool equestrian tomboyish look when she's wearing the blue and brown clothes. And then all of a sudden later on in the trailer, in which we can assume is later on in the game, she gets all handmaiden-y and waifu-y and oh, I'm, I fall into my, you know, fall into Link's arms and save me, save my daughter. You know, that kind of reminds me of the last time we saw Zelda in a major console, though. She started out all sassy and tomboyish, and then she fell to the ground and became this shrine maiden waifu mm, maiden in distress. Hmm. It's almost like the same fucking jizz stain of a director is doing both games. Oh, wait, it is, of course. Here's the crazy part about Zelda for Switch. It's only 900p progressive when it's docked in the Nintoaster for the Switch, which is laughable. Uh, I'm sorry, that's just fucking pathetic that the Switch can't handle running a Wii U game at 1080p, let alone upping the frame rate. I told y'all this was not a powerful system. You should have known by now that after seeing the titles, seeing how Skyrim, FIFA's just a PS3 port, seeing the basic graphics of even the bigger titles like Mario Odyssey and Xenoblade 2, this is not a powerhouse. This is a console that's, yes, better than the Wii U, but it's not going to be approaching X-Bone or original PS4 levels at all. Now, here's the other shitty part. People from, from uh, Game, GameSpot and IGN are confirming from Hands On Play that the game still frame has frame rate hiccups when it's in the toaster at 900p, but when it's in handheld mode and running at 720p, which is probably the max resolution of the Wii U version, uh, it runs best. So the best running version of Breath of the Wild is in handheld mode on the Switch. Because that's what you waited all those years to hunker down and stare at it on a six inch screen. Yeah, okay. So here's where it killed the Switch launch for me forever. I was still going to wait in line. I was still gonna buy it. Everything, you know, I was disappointed, but you know what? I'll still buy it. I'll still get it at launch. And then Nintendo of America announced on Twitter, yes, the Wii U version of Breath of the Wild is coming out March 3rd, the same day as the Switch. Meaning that the Switch will have one exclusive game and a remake of a SNES game on it when it comes out in March, 1-2 Switch. The game that doesn't actually care what you're doing so long as you're waggling the controller around. That is it. That is your one exclusive, only can be played on Switch in its entirety game title, 1-2 Switch. There's your launch title. Your one fucking exclusive. Because Zelda Breath of the Wild will be out on both systems March 3rd. You know what? $60 for Breath of the Wild versus $360 on the Switch. That is a six 
times 600% increase to play it with a more stable frame rate in handheld mode. No fucking thank you. I am going to get a Nintendo Switch, and I am fucking excited for Mario Odyssey and Xenoblade 2. They are going to be awesome games. I'm sure No More Heroes 3 is going to be pretty neat, and I'm kind of interested in Project Octopath as well. And yeah, where are the I and where are the Smash Brothers games? I don't know, but I am not buying this at launch. I am not, but there's no reason for me personally to own this launch. If, if you guys are, are really down with snipper clips and one-two switch and arms, great, go for it. I, there's just no way in fucking hell I'm paying over three hundred dollars for that. But you know what? There will be great games on it. Like I said, there will be great games. They're gonna come. They're not going to be at launch, uh, but you know what? In time, this will become a worthy system. I have no doubt, but I'm not buying it at launch. Uh, we, we will be getting it for the channel. Uh, we, we have one coming in. Uh, both Andrew and Max have Switch uh, consoles pre-ordered, so that's fine. You will see it. We will cover it on this channel. We will cover it on our streams, but personally speaking, just me, I'm not buying it at launch. Uh, I will... I will put up with the the weird little framey shit on the Wii U version of Breath of the Wild. I've already played it at E3. It was noticeable but not game breaking, so whatever. It's not worth it for me. And I'm kind of shocked and appalled at Nintendo's pricing of the controllers. Their their online service is a joke still. It, it, it's a joke even in its forthcoming announcements. So it's kind of sad. It, it's it's just bizarre that Nintendo is doubling down on motion controls. It's almost like they're fucking Captain Ahab and they're going after that big fucking fat casual whale and trying to stab it once more to get all that fucking whale money. I don't know what they're thinking, but you know what? Hey, if you want to milk cows, go for it. Good, so good job. Hey, way, way to feel the milk. <laughs>